Hey everyone, it's Hayes, and in today's video we're going to be discussing some theories I have for the sequel to The Miraculous Movie. Now obviously we have no information about the sequel other than my best friend Jeremy Zag confirmed that there will be one, so all of these theories are bouncing off what happened in the movie. And of course this video will contain spoilers for the whole movie, so if you haven't watched it yet, are you living under a rock? Go and watch it immediately. Trust do it! So first things first, let's talk about the ending and no, not the kiss, but we'll get to that later. And yes, if you were wondering, since I got to go to the premiere or the preview, whatever you want to call it, yes, everyone did start screaming when it got cut off. And yes, I'm sure everyone wanted to strangle Jeremy Zag, which was truly unfortunate since he was in the same room. <laughs> but more on that later. And by that, I mean Adrianette, not the people clambering over the seats to hit Jeremy. That didn't happen, or at least I think it didn't happen. And now I sat pretty far away. <laughs> anyway, so for now let's talk about Natalie. So the movie ends with her going into the murder basement which is much nicer in the movie compared to the show, although I don't know how Emily hasn't started decaying yet since she's not in her fridge. I don't care though. <laughs> Apparently it doesn't matter. And she has around her neck the peacock miraculous, so I think at this point we have all assumed that Queen Natalie is going to use it to try and fulfil what Gabriel Babes was trying to do in the movie. However, important question, does Gabriel even know Natalie is going to do this. All he says at the end of the film in a voiceover is that Natalie is the one he trusts the most and that this will be kept between them. That literally could just mean, hey, I told Natalie that I'm Hawk Daddy and that I'm keeping my wife's dead body in the house because I can't afford the funeral. He doesn't state that he asked Natalie to use a peacock miraculous or save Emily. It is extremely vague and I think it's, you know, extremely vague for a reason to keep us guessing. And also, I'm not entirely certain that Gabriel Babes is even aware that what Emily has is a miraculous. Right now, I am assuming Emily died the same way that she did in the show. She couldn't conceive, so instead of going for IVF, she was like, hey, I'll use this brooch that comes with a talking blue blob. It's completely normal. And again, I would assume it's broken, which is what killed Emily. It made her ill and then it killed her. But like I said, I'm not even sure if Gabriel Babes is aware of this. He doesn't use it at all during the movie, doesn't even consider it once, even when he's losing terribly to these two teenagers. He'd rather go through the pain of acubatizing himself, which does look quite painful in the movie compared to the show, in order to bring her back. Now, this could just be because he knows what happened to Emily and it's broken and therefore he's like, if I use it, I will die. It doesn't seem like so far he has access to the grimoire and could repair it or anything like that so he doesn't use it because he will die. However, assuming Adrian is a senti monster like in the show, Gabriel doesn't try to control him at all. There is an instance right before the attack at the fairground where he tells Adrian to come home, but he doesn't touch his ring. But that's only assuming the Amok is in the same place as it is in the show. As you saw with the movie, it's non-canon, a lot of things are different. And Adrian is also able to disobey this order as obviously Catnoir turns up to the fight. Gabriel Babes in general also isn't very protective over Adrian. It seems like he's been at school for a while. He's already friends with Nino at the start start of the movie. They seem like really good friends when the movie starts, unlike Marinette, who seems to have no friends. And even before he's Cat Noir, he's allowed to wander around Paris freely, and even afterwards too. And also during the montage, there's the picnic and the cinema outing, and during Stronger Together, he stays out all night and Gabriel isn't that worried. Now I do think that's because he's so occupied with Hawk Daddy related shenanigans but if he was concerned enough he could easily control Adrian if he was senti but he never does in the movie and I don't think that points to Adrian not being senti. I think that points to Gabriel not actually even being aware of what's going on. So with all that in mind I don't think Gabriel knows or that this even is a miraculous. It doesn't seem like he knew what Emily was doing. However it does seem that Natalie does know and that she was possibly much closer to Emily than Gabriel Babes was aware and Emily confided in her the truth about Adrian when she was dying perhaps and now Natalie wants to use the Peacock Miraculous to help bring Emily back by using its power to get Ladybug and Cat Noir's Miraculous. The two women being close friends is the only explanation I can think of right now for doing this. I'm not sure this version of Natalie is in love with Gabriel 
while Gabriel obviously trusts her, they don't seem as close as they are in the show. There's a point during the start of the movie when they arrive home, he pretty much tells Natalie to shut up and go away. They don't seem as close as they are in the show. So I don't think she's doing this out of love for her boss. I think it's out of love for her friend who died. And I hope Adrian being senti is confirmed by the end of the sequel. And all of this talk moves us on to the topic, which is Gabriel Babes himself. Oh. I've missed you, my love. Now, my main question here is, will the man finally be arrested? <laughs> I'm not really sure, to be honest. Nadia announced on the news that he was the one who was Hawk Daddy, but I'm not sure what crime he could be charged with. Criminal damage, perhaps. But Ladybug did fix all the damage from the final attack, but I'm not sure about the damage from the other attacks. Honestly, I don't know, to be honest. But I am really hoping he'll stay out of prison. Maybe he gets, like, a you know the, the ankle tag things I've forgotten the proper name for, or, like, community service, something like that, so we can rebuild his relationship with Adrian. I think with the way their relationship concludes in the movie, it'll be really rewarding to see in the sequel them slowly learning how to be a father and son in the absence of Emily. And who knows, maybe this version of Gabriel Bayes will be better at making pancakes. I feel very like comfortable with this pancake. As for whether he would help Natalie, right now I don't think he would. He seems very regretful about what he did and I don't think he'd want to put Adrian through that again. Furthermore, I would hope that the Butterfly Miraculous is well and truly safe, since the Butterfly Miraculous in the movie does seem kind of evil, so I'm not sure via what method he would help Natalie exactly. And he also knows Ladybug and Cat Noir's identities. Again, I doubt he would betray Adrian like that if we consider the ending of their relationship in the movie. And Natalie would win pretty darn quickly if Gabriel worked with her and was like, yeah lol, I know who they are. Go crazy. It's and speaking of Ladybug and Cat Noir, yes, of course, now let's talk about the consequences of the reveal. Now, I don't really have ideas for this as such. It's more of, I've been fangirling since the premiere and I need to tell you all my feelings. <laughs> I loved it and I'm so excited to see how that dynamic is going to change now they know who the other person is. In comparison to the show, the Lady Noir dynamic is a lot more equal. Ladybug is still in charge, but it's still more equal. And I think that will stay the same since Adrian does seem pretty fond of Marinette. However, I do think a possible change could be Adrian getting very protective of Marinette, both when she's Marinette and when she's Ladybug. He says right before Stronger Together in the theatre that he's been afraid to get close to other people after what happened to his mum, and now his girlfriend is going to be putting herself in danger with Mayura senti monsters, and oh my god, can I just say, assuming Natalie is going to be Mayura, that's what's going to happen. I am hyped to see her in this animation style, she's going to be gorgeous. Stunning. So I think he could get super protective over her and it could end up hurting him, her or both of them. But oh boy, I am excited for him to meet Tom as her boyfriend this time because that man will tear Adrian's legs off. He is so much more protective over his daughter in the film compared to the show. And the final theory I have is about the other heroes. And I don't think we're going to get any others apart from Rena Rouge, Carapace and Queen Bee. And let me explain why I think that. So we know the other miraculouses exist as we see them at the opening of the movie during Master Fu's exposition and during the selection sequence when the miracle box comes out of the gramophone we can see drawers on the side alluding to there being the mouse miraculous, the snake miraculous and so on. However due to the time constraints of the movie compared to the show they were unable to use the other classmates and they are now non-speaking parts and as much as I love the rest of the class apart from Nathaniel it would be odd to suddenly give them a speaking part just to give them a miraculous in the sequel when they didn't do anything in the first movie. So for that reason, basically time constraints and what was already introduced, I think we'll only get the Heroes Day squad and maybe this is an unpopular opinion but I loved it when it was just the five of them so I actually can't wait for just them and I also really can't wait to see Chloe as Queen Bee again. Again, unpopular opinion but I still love it. <laughs> and this isn't so much of a theory since there's no evidence for it, but I've seen people talking about it, so you know, let's join in. What about Lila? She wasn't in the movie, but I do think there's definitely scope for her in the sequel, possibly to set her up as the villain for the third movie, which Jeremy has also talked about. And I would assume that this version of Lila would also want Adrian and maybe try to break Adrian and Marinette up, but will be very unsuccessful, which could perhaps play into her motivations for being a villain. But right now, there's no confirmation 
emotion she will be in the movie, but I'd love to see her. As much as I dislike her, she brings a lot of drama to the table. So yeah, I like her for that. So those are my theories for the movie, besties. I hope you all enjoy the movie. I absolutely loved it. I just, I keep rewatching little bits of it every day. I just... I'm addicted to it. So I'd love to know what you think of my theories. What do you think is going to happen in the sequel, besties? I'll see you in the next one.